Hey everybody, Dave Duford here. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. We are back yet again for another role-playing hot seat training session. So I'm going to kind of take this from the standpoint of uh, maybe actually just calling on you guys to ask maybe what part of the script you want to work on. Um, I don't really have any agenda today. I was considering if, if we need to have a specific one to go with the sales presentation or step three or into the close and, and drill that. But uh, since we got a small group today, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, ask to see who wants what, if anything in particular. So, uh, Donald, I don't know if you're there. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, I'm on the phone. For some reason, my, my computer audio is not really working this morning, but. Can you hear me back, I guess? Yeah, I can hear you great. Is my voice like all jumbly and stuff? No, you're coming through fine. Usually on my end, it, 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 I got bad reception out here in the country, so it's, it's usually <laughs> reverse, you know. Do, do you want to work on any particular portion of the script? I know this is your first role play I think you've joined in on. Uh, is there anything you want to uh, Actually, I've, I've been on all the rest of them. I've oh, just yeah. been... Uh, yeah, I've just been viewing instead of uh, joining the Zoom. I just, just figured out yesterday how to get to Zoom and actually open it up. I didn't know you right. had to click that little open button to go. Gotcha. But, um, right. um, not, not particularly. I mean, I'm putting together my script um, according to all the visuals that are printed off your website, off the FEAM. Okay. And I've kind of laminated those visuals to hand to them while I'm saying parts of the script so that they have something in their hand that they're looking at while I'm also repeating um, the important parts like, you know, here's my certification. So I've laminated my ENO, my AML, my Mississippi, Tennessee license. Um, then I laminated the part, uh, who was it? Forbes, I guess, had the, the difference between uh, captive and a, a, a broker. And uh, that one is actually working for the benefit of the insurance company. One's working for the benefit of the customer. And so I go through that, you know, the points where you say to go through that, I've kind of mirroring my script i've got like a, a two and a half page written thing now i think i kind of need to narrow it down a little bit um rapport working of course i don't think there's a way to do a script on that it's basically right. whatever visuals you have and and what's going on you know the obvious keynotes i'm catching from group me and everybody else is you know talk about the neighborhood talk about uh, their pets because uh, you know 90 percent of them are going to have pets talk about whatever you see in the house as well as you want to mention their family and get into that a little bit because that's the obvious right. reasons why we're there, you know. Um, right. But uh, yeah, I'm still so I'm still putting together parts of the script. But uh, you know, I mean, if, if you want to go through any of it, that, we can absolutely. Yeah, let's. Why don't we start from the top? Uh, why don't we okay. just jump in and, and start with your script, and then at intervals, I'll just say off script and kind of uh, give you my thoughts on anything that might be okay. good or needs improvement. Does that sound good? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, so I'll play okay. prospect, you play agent, and just start from the top of whatever you're at, and, and we'll just take it from there. All right, hey, David, uh, how you doing today? Hey, I'm good. What's your name again? My name is Donald, and I'm actually stopping by to see you today because you sent in this little card. I have this little mailer here, so it says I, have, I actually have a Walmart gift card for you as soon as I go through my presentation, you know, today. So I'll, uh, here's that card, and I'll make sure to give that to you just as soon as I finish the presentation. Um, the insurance companies, you know, they actually make me come out and visually see my people, my prospects, so that I can be face to face with you and actually explain what it is that we offer and see if you're a good fit for it. Um, so if you have about five, ten minutes a day, let's, let's sit down and let's go through, you know, what you might qualify for as well as what I offer. And that's when I would, you know, proceed to get inside the house, I guess. Inside okay, so house, off script would, here, that, that's your door knocking script. That's door knocking as well as, I guess, when I meet them, um, you know, uh, that, that's not going to be my phone call script, obviously, you know. Okay. But, yeah, that's, that's when I'm, I'm either door knocking straight out or when I come up to the house and we already have an appointment. I want to go ahead and introduce myself, tell them why I'm there outside to get me in the door, you know. That, now, I, correct me if I'm wrong. Did you mention okay. the ease of how quick this would be or how this isn't a big deal in the closing there before he asked to come in? Uh, just a five to ten minutes. Okay. Going through what you they said. qualify for, but still, I, I'm still kind of mentioning that it's on the aspect of insurance as opposed to. The, I've noticed uh, some people on the group me have been getting a lot of you know flyers out and very little success on. It. Hopefully, I'm going to get more.
success by actually mentioning this is insurance, it's pennies a day, not trying to fool them over the, hey, you might get something free if I come in the door, uh, you know, from Social Security or whatever, which is coincidentally one of my first slides, the Social Security one. So are you are you are you using the Walmart gift card that says life insurance on it a couple times? The one that I sent you? Yes, absolutely. It's only okay. available from Lead Concepts. Need Lead right. didn't have any, and nobody else had right. Lead. Uh, lead Concepts had that one. Yeah. So this so sent a thousand here, but I think I may have I've gotten back eight so far, and that's only in the past couple of days. So I plan on calling all those today because it's actually sleeping over here today. So it's a good day to be on the phone and said, you know, I don't think uh, many seniors are actually getting out today because it's reported as sleep, you know. Um, so, so for everybody's kind of reference point here, so a Walmart gift card lead is where the lead says the normal stuff on it, but at the end, there's the bribe. Send us back for a free Walmart gift card. It's an undisclosed amount. We usually recommend to give $5. Some agents love these leads. Some agents hate these leads. I've fallen into the or fell into the love these leads category because particularly the lead that Donald's using says life insurance three times on it. It doesn't say uh, state regulated last I checked. And it even says in fine print an insurance agent, this is an insurance agent solicitation. And in most cases, even with all of that on there, the removal of state regulated life insurance repeated multiple times, response rates are decent. Uh, one. 1.2, probably where you're going to end up, Donald, I'd figure you're going to get some more leads for sure. You know, 1.2, 1.5 is something that's sustainable. And um, I like the quality. I never, I, I had more people who got what it was about than any other lead I ever worked. The problem with that is there's no guarantee on response rates, you know, so that's why I'm, I don't use this lead as a, as a lead or a first choice because you, you know, it sucks to get, even if it's a good lead and you only get six or seven cards back, you've just paid $70 a lead, you know, so. Uh, but yeah, so, I, was, you know, I kind of, I kind of said, you know, well, let's, let's jump out there and take a chance on the Thanksgiving mark. You know, it was what, two weeks before Thanksgiving. That's when I ordered them. They take about two or three weeks to come in. So I thought, well, it's, it's either one, one or the other. Either I'm going to get a horrible response because it's Thanksgiving or I'm going to get great response because everybody's home for the four days in a row. And I'm gonna get a really good response, you know. So I guess we'll we'll turn around and see. That was yeah, kind of the, the never know. Rep from the lead concepts as well. He said, you know, it can go either way. So yeah, basically, yeah. I want to get some in so I can get and hit the streets one way or the other. You know. Sure. Okay, so let's go back to the scripting. Uh, you've just gotten in the door. What do we do now? All right, David, um, I know that is absolutely beautiful paneling behind you there. Is this a uh, this a new home for you? That's brand new. Actually just closed on it three weeks ago. Thanks for asking. Oh, that's awesome. You've actually read all those books back there? Most of them. I like, you know, I like having the books up there because it makes me look smart when I do my YouTube videos. Well, there you go. <laughs> People overestimate that's exactly, me, but it works useful. And that's, that's exactly why I'm here today, though, to, you know, to give you some more information about something that, you know, <laughs> most people might see online, they might see on TV, or they seen all these popular commercials from AARP or uh, Mutual Omaha. I used to watch that show with my grandfather, actually. But yeah. uh, they've seen all these different advertisements, and they haven't actually stopped and read about the details of what we're here to talk about today. And, of course, that's final expenses or burial insurance. I don't like to call it burial insurance. I like to call it final expense. But um, I want to start out again by introducing myself. to Donald McNett. I actually live at Olive Branch, Mississippi, which is right down the road. So... I'm the rep for this area when you sent that card in or slash when you sent this Facebook response back in, then I'm the rep for this area. So, you know, I'm right down here out of this area. I don't live three states away and I'm not trying to con you into buying anything. I'm, I'm uh, about 10 minutes down the road so I can help you out with anything you may want. Now, we, I've actually helped out hundreds of different people in this Memphis area with health, life, final expense or slash burial insurance. So here's my card and here's my certifications. And of course I have the card with the magnet on the back of it, David, so they could put that right. up. Um, here are the copies of my license, Mississippi, Tennessee. Here's also a copy of my errors and omissions policy and my anti-money laundering. So these are just different certifications that I had to take to be an insurance. And they basically say that I can't give you any kind of false information to try and push myself further or push a sale further. 
you understand that? Yeah, makes sense. Okay. So off script, um, real what, what off thought? script, real quick, Donald. Before we go to the next portion, so, okay. so for everybody right, watching this, this is the introductory phase. Okay, this is what I would define as setting the table when you meet a prospect. You can't go through a sales presentation. It, well, let, me, let me rephrase that. If you go through a sales presentation and you haven't formally introduced yourself, meaning you haven't told them who you are, what your certifications, designations are, et cetera, invariably what happens is, is that people start to think when you say something a little off, they're going to realize, I don't know anything about this guy. And, and it, it, you lose trust. That's kind of the, the key thing a lot faster. So doing the introduction, it should be with them. What's in it for me, the prospect. So who are you, why you're there and what you specialize in. And just to hit a couple of things and it should be scripted. You should memorize the script. You should be able to rehearse it on the spot. This is not like rapport building like Donald said earlier where rapport building is just kind of, we'll kind of see what happens here, you know. With the introduction, it's very much to the point. Um, what Donald did right, he mentioned that he's local. He lives up in Olive Branch, Mississippi, which is great. If you're working in the Mississippi area and you know that somebody's around the corner, that's good. That people like that, the whole local vibe thing. It does make a difference. Uh, he was specific about uh, how many people he's helped, how long he's been in the business, I think, and just being overall specific. You know, I'm from Olive Branch, Mississippi. I've helped hundreds of people in this area with health insurance, life insurance, so on and so forth. Uh, this is the perfect opportunity to show your credentialing, show your license. I, I recommend printing it off and then getting it laminated. And then, um, and then as well as a bit, well, you can give a business card, but anything that you show them, um, laminate them that you show to every time just to make the life of it last longer. And then, um, can I, can I make a couple of, uh, I don't want to say criticisms, but suggestions down there? Yeah. You okay. No, okay. I hit it. I don't think you need to show your ENO or your AML. I, I don't okay. think our prospects know what that is. And okay. I don't think it, I don't think it necessarily hurts. It's just one of those things. I don't know if it helps. So maybe less is more kind of philosophy. I, I think okay. what your goal is here is to build confidence and trust. And the license and the business card and an effective introduction, I think, is enough to make that actually work that way. Okay. And um, let's see here. Blah, 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 blah. Um, okay, cool. Any questions there? No, not from me. Okay. Uh, let me, uh, Scott had a question. I'm going to unmute him. Uh, Scott, you want to jump in and ask? Well, you were talking about the leads beforehand. You specifically said the, that you love the Walmart leads. Have you talked about the leads that I'm using? This is telemarketing. No, I haven't. And the reason is, is most agents I start with do direct mail. That's, well, I want most agents to start with direct mail if their budget allows. So, but yeah, these telemarketing leads have been great. Um, we've got an internal vendor that's, and I hate telemarketing leads usually. Uh, but uh, Scott's done well with them. Uh, I've got a guy in Florida who is struggling with direct mail and um, has turned it around. I mean, he wrote 6,500 in business last week off of telemarketing leads. And they're 12 bucks a lead. They take a week and a half to turn around. I've just been absolutely impressed. So, um, yeah. They've been awesome. They've been awesome for me. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, Scott. Appreciate that. Thanks for the reminder. If you're interested in, in purchasing some of these, uh, you can just email me. I'll send you the order form. Okay, Donald, back on script here. What, one second real quick. Let me do this real quick. Somebody okay. just hold it. Well, hold on one second. Let me text my wife. Someone just rolled up in the driveway. I want to make sure she grabs the door. Hold on one second. Probably somebody trying to sell final expense going on. Some some mortgage protection agent. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking. I swear. I swear to damn insurance people. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was like, I'm literally doing an insurance sales training event right now. You want to come in and join me? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So if I have to interrupt you to go grab the door, if she doesn't, I don't know if she's 
dressed or bathed or whatever. So I'll, I have to, I apologize. So, <laughs> all right. Okay. So back on script. So introduction, we've done rapport. Rapport building was good. You got me to laugh a little bit. That's all you need to do guys. When you rapport build, you don't need to build a friendship. You just need to be friendly with them. So what happens now? All right. Um, actually I'll pull out the card. It was the uh, printed off the Facebook leads that I, I just recently got. Um, so follow-up question so far is what were your thoughts when you and I'll hand them that card or handed them that, that copy of the Facebook that I just printed out and put their name on it. What were your thoughts when you sent this card back in to me? Okay. Off script real quick, just a quick change. What you want to say is what were your thoughts and concerns? It sounds like I'm splitting hairs and I might be. Concerns. Okay. But I say concerns are emotional thoughts are, they could be emotional. Sometimes they're logical. But that way you kind of okay. get both logic and emotion, both important to making a decision. But you want to hit the emotion more than anything at this point. So go ahead and rehearse that okay. saying thoughts, concerns, and then we'll continue. All right. I've added that on there. All right. So what were your thoughts and concerns when you sent this card back in? And then go ahead, Dan. Yeah. So, you know, I'm 65. I'm not getting any younger. Um, you know, my dad just died a couple of years ago and he was buried. It was very just traumatic and eye opening, I guess. And it's just, I don't want my kids having to pay for this thing out of pocket. It's not fair to them. And, uh, you know, I just, just concerned. I'm so sorry to hear about your, your father, David. Uh, let me ask you this though. Do you have any coverage right now? Do I have any coverage right now? Um, any money that would go to your to your um, relatives to whenever you pass away? Yeah, off script. Okay. What do you What are you doing right now for your life insurance? To just be more specific, okay. I, I might say, well, I've got auto insurance, and it's not necessarily wrong. It's just a little bit easier uh, to. Okay. So, what are you doing right now for your life insurance? So, oh, so, and that's assumptive in the sense that, oh, I've got insurance, so you're going to share it, as opposed to asking. Because they may say, well, no, I don't want to say, I don't want to share this quite yet. So if you just say, so what are you doing for your life insurance? It's a better, because some people just jump to nothing or, well, I got this. I think you get a better answer that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Let me add that in real quick. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. It's so back on script here. So I'll answer that question. So what am I doing for my life insurance? Um, you know, I've, I've got this policy, you know, I'm still working. I still got six months more. Um, I've got this life insurance policy through work, you know, it covers a couple of, uh, it, co it covers my wage plus times a few amounts, you know, and that's always been kind of my go-to for final expense and the, and the death benefit or the, the burial cost coverage. Okay. And I have a split right here in my script, Dave. So you said that and I'm coming back with, well, you know, that's great. Around half of the people that I help already have coverage. Um, how much coverage do you have and, and what are you paying for that now? Do you know? Yeah. So I have $150,000 in coverage from work. And um, what am I paying for it? I think it's like, you know, I get paid every other week. It's like a couple of bucks. Yeah, it's not a lot of money. I'm, I'm not paying more than $10 a month for it. I know that Okay, I'll tell you what, do you mind grabbing that? Do you have that declarations page? And do you have the, the info on that insurance policy? I'd like to go through I, that. You know, what I don't, you I might don't even, have. they never gave me a policy. I don't even remember them. I mean, they just, when I signed up 20 years ago uh, and went to work for them, I mean, I filled out some information on life insurance and told them I wanted it. And that's all I have, you know, so I, I don't know I any of the specifics. Okay, okay. Well, I'll tell you what, it sounds like what you might have is straight term. I'm going to get into that in just a minute here. Let me go through a couple other things first. So I'll script real quick. Um, just okay. make a note here. What, what I'm setting you up for is that some of your prospects will have group insurance. Okay? Okay. So I don't know if you're going to talk about this or not, but you can talk about it now or save it to the term conversation. And that's not wrong either. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, okay. Do you, so group insurance it's like group health insurance. It's only good when you're employed or working for the company. But when you retire or you become disabled, you get on COBRA 
you know, so if you remember what COBRA was, that's like what both parts of the health insurance payment was, you know, the health insurance covers half of the premium, you cover the other half. Well, here you got to pay the full amount on an individual policy basis, which usually causes the premium to skyrocket. And then many of these group term insurance plans terminate at age 70. Okay. So, and what you have to play on here too, is you don't know what you got. You know, it's like, especially if you get resistance later on to picking up a supplementary policy, most people will say, yeah, you're right. I probably will lose this. I need to have something as a backup. You know, it's their own idea, I got you. but you got to play okay. to that later on. If they're like, well, let me see what I got at work and, or, well, I think I've got enough. Of, I'm not really that concerned. Does that make sense? Yeah. I actually don't have anything in here on group. I've sold against Cobra on the health side, but not. Yeah. Uh, I'm fine yeah. Just if the, here's the indicator. The indicator is I've got coverage through work and you, you did the right thing. The smart thing was you asked about how much it was a month. And, and I was like a couple of dollars. That's always an indication that if it's through work and it's a couple of dollars a month, that it's probably group term insurance. And then you can go, I think that's enough information because, because the way I explain it to people, even if I don't have a, even if I don't have a policy, I'm like, look, you know, it's, it's $5 a month for $150,000. Like, doesn't that just think about that for a second? How does the insurance company make any money if they're going to let yeah. you keep that forever? Right. I mean, there's no way in a hundred years they could collect $150,000 off of a $5 a month collection, you know? And so I yeah. try to connect yeah, you're right. You know, there's something up. I just want them to be suspicious of it enough that it opens okay. their mind to a guarantee which you can provide. Gotcha. Okay. So continue on. I'm sorry. So um, that's all right. No, good. Um, check that. All right. So then I've got a note in here. Just check the declarations page and the application for errors because you guys mentioned the application might have some errors on it um, the other day. Like some people didn't put their correct age, correct weight, correct mail oh. they were on. Or that. If you were reviewing a policy, yes, exactly. If they're if they're button heads with me then, and I have, oh, I've already got insurance. I don't need to hear anything else. Okay, well, let me look at the dex page and let's see if we, you know, then I'm going to rebut that dex page, then proceed into the rest of the presentation. Okay, you, you think you're going to rebut good? what now? The de uh, declarations page. Oh, okay. You're just going to so this again for for everybody else's sake. You're assuming that the client has the policy, they brought it to you, you're looking at the declaration page, you're exploring the policy, uh, looking for any kind of weak, weak points, correct? Exactly, yeah. If they, now if they're open to hear the rest of it, then I'm just gonna, you know, I, I still want the deck page, I'm gonna put it on the table, we'll look at it at the end of the presentation. If they're saying, oh, I already have insurance, I don't need anything, goodbye, then I'm gonna say, well, let's look at this right now, you know, I'm gonna go straight into, this doesn't really cover you, because you're already at home at 10.30 a.m., so you're not working with this company anymore, or this cuts off in five years when you turn 70, or whichever one that I, I see on the declaration page. So, yeah. so, and that's all right. Let's drill what happens when I say, I don't know where my policy is. So ask me to get the policy, and then I'm going to give you resistance, and let's see how you handle it. Okay, so you you don't have a copy of your policy. Okay, well, it sounds to me like well, no, I I don't know where it is. I mean, I've got so much crap that I don't throw out that it's gonna it'll take me all day to get it. You know, I got you. Okay, we well, probably need to get a hold of that and get you know so you'll know exactly where it is. But it sounds to me like what you have is a straight term. It's probably through a group if you said it's through work, and I'm trusting if you're here with me today in the middle of the day that you're probably not working there anymore. So if you're already retired or disabled or, you know, whatever reason you may be off today, then you may not have that insurance anymore. If you do have that insurance, it may, be, it may cut off on you really soon. So what I'd like okay. to do is show you again what I offer today. Okay. See if you can get something locked in to where you know exactly what you have and you can have that ready in your hand for your relatives to take care of them if something does happen to you, you know, in, in the coming years. So off script, that sounds great. <laughs> Um, okay. I, what I want, I want to go back cause it's, it, we're kind of bouncing back and forth here, but I think this is really relevant. Let okay. me change the dynamics of the presentation a little bit and then we'll drill what would happen then. So I want you to imagine I don't have group insurance, but I have a private policy cause that's really what we're mostly going to run into. And then I want you to 
role play with me when I give you resistance on getting it. So let's start back at asking for the policy okay. on the basis I've got an individual policy and then let's see how we can handle when somebody says, no, I can't go get it or whatever. Okay. So it covered what your thoughts and concerns were when you sent in that, that card to me. And so that's why I'm here today. And then you said that you may have some existing life insurance, but you're not really sure on how much it may be or, or how long it'll last or any of the details on it. Is that correct, David? So, yeah, I mean, I've got, I've got a life insurance policy. I just don't remember who it's with. Um, you know, ask me to go get the policy. I don't know where it is. I mean, look at my house. It's a hoard. I, I got know. you. I don't know. I got you. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I tell you, like I mentioned before, around half of the people that, I help already have coverage in place. Now, why is that? Well, that's because there are a lot of different tricks on insurance. Insurance companies, they don't intentionally mean to trick people, but they do have to make money, right? You agree with that? Sure. sure. All right, so your policy that you have in place, <clears throat> it may be a straight term policy, which is probably going up on you every month or at least every year, and you may not even know it. You draft straight out of your account. Uh, you also, with the term policy, it also is going to, you know, has a term on it, hence the name. So it's going to end at a period that, uh, well, that may not be convenient for you. It may not work for you. If it ends at age 70 or if it ends at age 80, wouldn't you like to live beyond the age 80 and be covered? Sure. But I don't right. think, I don't think I, I haven't had a price increase. In. I don't, I've had my plan for two years and I haven't had a price increase. Yeah, I think well, I've got that's, term. that's typical. That's also typical of term insurance that you know some of them will be for that allotted term. If it's a five year, a ten year, might even be a fifteen year. I had a term policy when I was a uh, lot younger, from twenty up to thirty five. I had a fifteen year term policy, and it was great until I hit age thirty six, and then they started drafting me and started automatically pulling out a much higher premium on me. And uh, when I didn't pay that higher premium, they just turned around and canceled it. So you know what happened to all that money, David, that I spent for 15 years? Did you get it back? What? <laughs> no, I didn't quite get it back. The insurance company said, hey, congratulations. You didn't pass away, but uh -huh. we got all your money. So it's kind of like going to the casino. I, I, I put it all on, on green on the roulette table. And hey, congratulations. You had a good time here, but uh, we're going to need you to leave now because we have all your money. Yeah. So I offer insurance that... You can actually, well, I tell you what, let me, let me get into the rest of my presentation here and I'll tell you how things are different and what I can offer you that may be a little different from what you had currently had. So let's, let's get off a of script here. I'm going to ask you some right. questions and you tell me what you think. Do you know for a fact what I have at this point? No, I'm imagining you have term because you said low price and that's the only thing out there that's really low, low price. Relative to what? as old as you are. If you're, if you're 65, I think you said you were right. Yeah. Then but but low, rel what does low mean? It's a relative term. Like it's not specific. I got you. It's not objective. I got you. Low, so low could still be 40, 50 a month. I mean, low may be 200 a month. I mean, you don't want to assume. Oh, okay. Um, I got you. Uh, it, and that, that's kind of the takeaway here. Again, this is good that we're going over this. At this point, what you want to do, if someone doesn't have a policy to show you, you want to actively find the facts of what's going on and go through a procedure of questions to ascertain what the client has. And the reason we want to do this is because they may have a plan that is completely fine. Worst, best case, they just feel is, um, or best case, they could have a plan that, um, you know, um, is whole life insurance or they have term insurance, but they're confident that they've got the right thing. So we, we have to overcome that in order to get these sales or at least to open people's minds up. So let me, let me switch roles with you. Can do you mind if I role play how to handle this when you hear somebody say, I don't know where my policy is and you can play prospect? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. So Mr. Jones, um, Part of what I do here when I come meet you and you request this information is uh, to actually do a free policy review to make sure you've got the best plan and make sure you get a second opinion. Do you mind grabbing your policy, please? Well, I, you know, my, my daughter keeps up with all my paperwork. Okay. She, she's probably, she's at work right now. I don't even have it here. She's got it, I think, in her state at the house. That's 100% fine. So 
again, because I represent different companies and I don't want to be in a position to make a recommendation that's wrong. Let me ask a few other questions. Maybe you can kind of guide me here. Um, first of all, what's the company's name? Do you remember? Oh, Dave, I'm not really sure. It was, a, you know, uh, like I said, we got it through work before. So I, I don't know. It was with our whole health plan or something. I can't really remember who it is. And then, and then remember, just off, real quick off script, we're, we're pretending you've just got a private policy, not a work policy. So, oh, my bad. Okay. I that's I okay. Had a group. Okay. So, okay. You don't know the company. That's cool. Did you buy it through the mail or did you have an, excuse me, an agent come out to see you? You know, I had somebody come out here. It was about five years ago, Dave, and they, uh, they came and saw me. Uh, they just popped up at the door one, one day. Just like me. Okay. Um, what are you paying a month? I, I really don't know. Uh, uh, my daughter keeps up with my finances again. You know, uh, I know it's within my budget, though. Okay. And I assume it's coming out of your bank account every month, like most insurance companies, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. And then do, do you recall how much coverage it is? Is it 5,000, 10,000, 20,000? Any of those numbers sound familiar? I, I really don't know. I, I want to say it's more, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay. And do you know if it's, did you remember the agent saying it's either term insurance or whole life insurance? Is that either of that ring a bell? I barely even remember that person stopping by this. Yeah, no, it's been a long time. It's been since yesterday. <laughs> Well, do this for me because it's really important to make sure we get the best plan for you. Since this is coming out of your bank account every single month, you're going to have a record of the company's name there. And the cool thing is we can just call the company up and just confirm what you actually do have. And the reason I want you to do this is because ultimately it's going to help me make a better recommendation by knowing what you currently have and making sure anything I recommend is good. So could you go grab your bank statement, please? And then we'll figure out who it is and call from there. Okay, and I can get, uh, David, I can get um, info with them on the phone without the policy number? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you can call the company up three, well, in the home with the client on speakerphone, okay, put it on speakerphone, and then the client, you can introduce the client, and then the client can say, yeah, my social security number is this, and they'll pull up the policy information, and then at that point, what you want to ask is, okay, is this term insurance? Is this whole life insurance? Has, is, has, is the coverage ever going to go up ever at any point in the future? What is, what is, how much coverage is it? What are you paying? And like, they'll give you all that information they're required to, even if you are there. You can always say, I'm a friend of so-and-so, and we're trying to figure out what kind of insurance she has. You don't have to say, I'm an agent trying to replace you or something like that. So... <laughs> So, and, and they're required if she requests it to give the information, but nothing sells against our competitors better than our competitors admitting what they actually have get, gotten their clients. Does that make sense? So like, it's actually even yeah. more powerful because when you can get the facts, especially when it plays to your favor, of course, it's coming from the horse's mouth. It's not me saying this, it's the company. Yeah. And, yeah. and plus it gives you, way better flexibility to, um, to, to really make a good recommendation and to get a decision from the prospect. If you go into the sales presentation without clarity as to what they have, how much they pay, how much coverage they have, there's, there's this nagging sense of doubt that maybe I've got enough, maybe what I have is good enough. And that's hard to overcome if you haven't objectively determined what it is. What it is. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh -huh. So real quick, yeah, I'm, I'm I, gonna, thought, I thought it was uh, I thought it was roll through and convince them of oh you need this you need this you need this you need this and then thinking oh I have all this and then at the end you get them uh, well show me this and bam okay I've convinced you you need this now you see that you don't go straight to the close right but you're saying do the opposite uh, get yeah. them the exactly get them. 100% qualified, I guess, before yeah. Going yeah. To the convincing stage. That's, that's how I roll, man. It's like the biggest okay. takeaway from how I train in this presentation style that I teach is get the relevant information as soon as possible and ditch a prospect that is not qualified. You can waste your precious time 
seeing people that don't fit your criteria for buying. And this is an important one, right? It's, it's not, whether it's not them having a policy or not, it's, but having the information is important in order to determine, okay, here's how, why I'm right. You got 5,000. Well, you want to be buried. Don't you need more? That's a lot stronger of a proposition than saying, you know, whatever else you would, because there's that lingering doubt about what they have. And a lot of them won't gotcha. think about grabbing their bank statement. You can also ask to call the daughter on the spot. You know, I may try that if the bank statement approach doesn't work either. Um, Sometimes you don't find that the other relative will kind of uh, become the philosopher there. And then, that's yeah, you know. exactly. That's why I wait to the last minute. Like if all else fails, you. call the doctor or the daughter. Gotcha. Okay. Um, now you also would, if you don't have a bank statement, try calling the bank up. Some banks, not all, some banks, it, it's the same thing. They'll call client gives their social security number. Can you tell me, what the name of the company is that's drafting out of my bank around the third of the month. Usually most clients know when the draft is coming out. And so then you, so it's just like this detective investigative work, right? We're getting the name, then we're calling the company, we're gathering the facts and having that on hand, again, is very powerful. Hopefully it's obvious. So uh, let me, let me bring Jonathan uh, on uh, Mike here. He's got his hand up. Jonathan, what can I do for you? Hey man, so about um, I'm tracking on the whole the policy thing, trying to get them to, to give you the policy because I think I've told you a few weeks ago I've run into that a few times where they just don't want to go get it, um, right. flat out refuse to go get it. Uh, some of them though, um, you know, when I've run during the week, we've called insurance companies to find out exactly what they want because again, it's it's awesome for the insurance company to tell that person what they have and yeah. not me, but what would you suggest for someone like me running appointments on nights and weekends when they don't have the information, yeah. they can't call the insurance company? Like how should I just continue to roll? What I've been doing is just continue to, to try to figure out how much they have, what they think they have, how much they think they they're paying for it. And then I just try sure. to roll on from there to try to tack on some coverage. Um, unless they're GI and they swear up and down that they've got, they want covers from somewhere else, but I can't, I don't have anything verified. So kind of what do I do there? What do you suggest? Yeah, a little more, a little more obstacles in the way, but always ask for the bank statement and tell them why, because I need to know what company you're with. What the, and at least if you can't call the company on the phone, if you see Colonial Pen there and then took it out a year ago, 99% chance, sure, that it's a two year waiting period policy. Um, or they take out their, it's AARP. And yeah. it's so much it's well, and if they've had it like maybe permanent, maybe so that's what, there are times where you can't get all the facts, but having some of the facts, if in, in an incomplete picture is better than having none. And you can still sell off of that concept. Like if, if, if they say like all I, the one thing I ask is the reason I asked, did an agent come over or did somebody sell it to you over the phone? The odds are excessively high that if it was sold over the phone or through the mail, sometimes I'll say that too, did you buy it through the mail? That it's a guaranteed issue carrier or a term insurance carrier, okay? And if you carry the materials that I teach you to bring with you, you can show this as much to them. Seeing the fine print where it says so-and-so, you know, you can make your claim right there in plain English. Um, and you are a lot more believable when you say, when you not just say that it's something, but here's facts and proof in an actual brochure in the fine print. Um, if you've got them though, and they're just, they, they, and not to throw out more objections to you, but if they don't know where yeah. their bank statement is, don't want to get their bank statement, or you just cannot get them to give you that information at that point, what do you do? Roll forward or just kind of close up I, shop? And I'll try to just by? get an idea. Is it so, so how much do you think you have Mrs. Prospect? Do you have, is it 5,000? Is it 10,000? Um, most people will remember. Well, I, I think it was, and it's not going to be accurate most of the time, but, yeah. say, well, I, but it's better than not, you know, like mm -hmm. I can make a reason why to buy a lot better with an, an estimate than no estimate. So I think it's, it's not more than 10, but it's not less than five. So let's call it seven. Great. 
well, I can work with seven. Hey, here's a reason you need more than seven. Inflation is going to go up. It's going to cost, yeah. the cost of burial is going to increase. You need, you don't need to have another 20 grand, not even 10, even a 5,000 would help. Does that make sense? You know, and so there's some things we can do as far as, as, as getting to an objective basis or a semi-objective basis that at least is based on some, something that the client is free. Okay, cool. Thanks. Sure. Hey, Dave. Yeah, man. Uh, question that, uh, about what Jonathan said. I, I know you kind of disagree on, on this, but what do you think if, you know, like Jonathan said, nights and weekends, if you're out and you can't get in front, you know, or call that insurance company, because uh, I know I've tried to dial a couple at 459 and they're, they're out, you know. Yeah, they're done. Um, yeah. But uh, if I roll, continue, roll through the presentation, someone really is interested. I mean, I know you hate and talk about not making second visits, but is that the time to make a, a, a visit during the day next Tuesday where we can call the insurance company? Or what are the odds of closing the deal like that if you come back? They're going to be 50% lower. I mean, I would... The, the objective always, regardless of the number of facts that you get, is to close the deal if it's feasible, if they're a qualified gotcha. prospect, that first call. Obviously, there's going to be exceptions where maybe you got a really good deal, they seem very interested, and the, uh -huh. and, it, and the whole buying decision is based off of what the evidence shows. That might warrant a second call when you could do some investigation on what actually the situation is. Mm -hmm. But until then, don't think of reasons to end the call. Think of reasons how to close it with, with what you got. And that's part of what we're teaching, of course, is just how to get as much so you can close on the first call. Okay, gotcha. So back on script here, I think, so you had asked me, okay, so we've gone over, what were your thoughts, concerns? Um, what are you doing with the current life insurance policy? We've reviewed it. We're back on the group term schedule. Um, you've kind of talked about how term insurance works. One suggestion I'll give back to you on that your explanation was kind of, don't get, take offense, a little long-winded. Um, I would just okay. say enough to spark their interest, to kind of have them hanging on till you get to really the details later on, because we, we haven't qualified them yet. And I think you picked up on that after you went through the term insurance discussion. And you gotcha. said, let me, let me get back to what I was saying and then we'll cover it. That's what you want to do, just in less words. And like what I would recommend in that case is, I would say something like, yeah, so you probably have what's called group term insurance. It's super cheap and it's, it's good coverage as long as you work or, you know, uh, are employed. If you're disabled or retired, it's likely you'll lose the coverage. And even if you can keep it, most of them cancel at 70 and the price goes up through the roof. So, um, you know, on that note, let's, let's kind of think of what you got. Does that make sense to you, Mr. Prospect? Yeah, maybe, sort of, kind of, no. Um, hopefully they say yes. And I figure that's what it is. That's mostly what you're going, that's what I've run into most of the time is people say, yeah, it's like what I figured. It's cheap. And, and then I'm like, good. So you can see the need for possibly a private separate policy. So if you do it really, when you lose your coverage, at least you have something to fall back on. Does that make sense? And then continue on with your presentation. And then if you want to elaborate on term, you know, save it for the, you know, save it for the actual step three of the presentation. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Back on pre-qualification questions. You want to jump in where we left off? I'm uh pre check the deck page. If they have interest, check the deck page and go to, uh, I'm, I'm full blown in the presentation next is what I, I had. Okay. So starting out, starting out with social security and what people think about their cost and this, that, whatever. Okay. You want me to roll through what I have? Or? Well, so what you're, I don't, where did you get the social security training from? Like, where does that sales presentation come from? Um, I think I printed the page off of your site. It says, well, here, I'll jump, jump right in and see what you think. A lot of people think that social security will pay for funeral expenses. And that, that's, that's correct. That's partly true. If the correct paperwork's filed, then Social Security can pay up to $255 to help with funeral expenses. And then I have the uh, laminated sheet to give them that shows that the government, it's from the Social Security Administration, that shows that they pay 255 
So they're holding on to that. I said, however, you can see the National Funeral Home Directors Association flip that side over. It says the average funeral in America is around $7,000. That article is actually a couple of years old. Here you can see, I have another laminate from Forbes. You can see that Forbes says the average cost is really between eight to 10,000. So those are the two laminates that I have. And then, then I go straight into another laminate that I have of me and my daughter. I want to show you the main reason that I have an insurance policy in place. This is my daughter, McKenna, and I want to make sure she's taken care of if something ever happens to me. She's actually in college now. This is a few years back. She goes to Alabama now, which is kind of why I'm out here selling insurance to cover that Alabama tour. Right. I can imagine. You know? so, but if you, uh, you know, so who do you want to make sure is covered if something happens to you, David? Um, yeah, I mean, I want my daughter to have the policy so that, that she doesn't have to pay out of pocket. I got gotcha. you. Okay. All right. Well, if you flip that laminate over, I have another picture here. It's actually me and my grandmother. Uh, her name is Louise Cagle, and she grew up in Hernando, Mississippi. We used to live down there, uh, right down the street from here. Now, this is one of my favorite pictures from a couple of years ago. She got sick, I guess, a couple of years ago. But this is actually about 10 years ago. When I was actually quite a bit, uh, quite a bit thinner, as you can tell in the picture. But uh, this picture was actually at my cousin's wedding reception in Nashville a couple of years before my grandmother got sick. So my grandmother ended up getting stomach cancer and she passed away. Well, let me tell you just a little bit about that. Is she had a burial plot. She wanted to make sure that she was buried next to my grandfather. So she had paid for the burial plot and she assumed that that was what she needed to cover. So when she passed away, myself, my parents, and my aunt had to figure out how to come up with around $7,000 instead of focusing on my grandmother and her memories and, you know, things like that. We actually had that burden to figure out how we were going to pay it, how long we had to pay it. And it was just, it brought us up with a, a lot of uncomfortable conversations between myself and relatives when we should have been focused on the actual matriarch of our family, my grandmother. So do you see how this is something that every person should have so it relieves the burden from everyone else? Oh, yeah, definitely. All right. Uh, I broke the page of current policy and mouse. All right, here are some of the reasons, David, that every senior agrees they need to have a plan in place. And then I actually have a laminate of the eight reasons. I think Forrester's sent it over to me. Um, taking the financial burden off their loved ones, beneficiary gets that money tax-free you can decide if it goes to the funeral home and, then, and you've covered most of that on feam as well so i go through that laminate there and then i ask them so if this is something you would actually want to buy today do you have a checking account now or do you have direct express because that's going to make a little bit of a difference here in my demonstration a checking account checking account okay I have one more page here. This next page is what shows you what you already know. And this is from, uh, I can't remember which insurance company I pulled it from, Dave. We've got my laminates in the trunk of my car right now. Um, the healthier you are, the cheaper the policy. You had mentioned you might have a policy that's, you know, a pretty cheap policy and it's a different amount and all that. Well, the more health issues mean a slightly higher premium, but I can still get you coverage. Basically, there are two types of insurance policies. One that covers a full benefit right away and one that pays interest for a couple of years and then covers the full benefit. But during that two year period, what you do is you get all of your money back if you pass away, plus an eight to 10% interest. Now tell me this, it, that's a whole lot better than spending your money on a shopping website or home shopping network, right? Sure. But, and then I go right into the qualifying questions after that. So I'll pull out, uh, I've got qualifying questions. Um, got my iPad with Best Plan Pro on it, and basically I ask them all the questions that are on Best Plan Pro with their medications and all that. Once we get to the medication, then I ask them to physically go get their bottles so that I can see what medications they are actually on and what milligrams that they have and all that kind of stuff. So off script here, a couple of things. The order in which you're going through this is out of order. Let me explain okay. what I mean. Right. There are four parts to the sales presentation. The first part, we got that down perfect. The rapport and trust building introduction, right? The second part is pre-qualification and fact finding. 
the reason we do the pre-qualification and fact finding is to determine if it's worth going through all of this motion and time that you spent explaining things, if they actually are qualified prospects or to conserve your time to end the sales call because they're an unqualified suspect. Now, at this point in your present, and let me demonstrate my point. You are getting to the health questions, right? You are gonna ask, yeah. obviously you would have by now, but you've already talked about a product that I may or may not qualify for. Now you didn't lead, it sounded like you talked about the two year waiting period policy, but we're talking product when we don't know if, the one question we haven't asked is what can you afford? We haven't qualified on budget yet. And what, we're just making things out of, out of order here. So I think it's a little, there could be problems to where you got to backtrack if they end up only qualifying for the two year wait but you may have presented them the first year full coverage because we don't know what they can qualify for at this point. So why tell them what the options are when they may not qualify for them? Okay. So what should happen, the preliminary opening questions, what were your thoughts? What are you doing for your life insurance? Can you get your policy? That kind of thing are good. But after you ask those questions, what you need to do is ask health questions. After that, ask the health questions. Don't go into a description of, of um, I would I would save I would save your description of your grandma and your and I would put the you know you showing your daughter I would show that in the introduction and then you talking about your grandmother I would save after the fact I mean I'm, I might have some back and forth on that I'm not 100 percent committed but I want what I want you to focus on is thinking I need to determine if this person is qualified or not and everything that I'm going to ask at this point needs to be leading me towards that determination and anything that doesn't needs to be placed somewhere else in the presentation uh, just depending on kind of what its nature is so what we need to ask at this point is health qualify go through the health questions grab the prescription bottles just like you said ask what are you doing how do you do payments um, you, I recommend saying, you know, something to the extent of the way insurance companies work these days is they do all of their billing electronic draft, or if you use a direct express card, um, which one do you use? I, I like that wording a little bit better. And then I pre-qualify, you know, so, or then I ask on the pre-qualify the budget, you know, uh, most of my people are fixed income. They don't have a lot of money to spend. They got to get the best deal. My job is to do that for you. I don't want you to spend more than you have to. If I can qualify you for a program today, can you afford between 80 and hundred dollars a month? And at that point, at that point, if I, get, if I get answers to all of that, the positive, more along the lines of the, the pre-qualification questions and then budget and drafting, if it's all good, I've got a prospect that I can now spend time on to talk about, hey, so here's why this is important. You know, I do this business because my grandma passed away and didn't have insurance or went through the burial. Like that's perfect at that point. And especially talking about product like term versus whole life, that kind of thing. It's okay to talk like that. Why? Because at this point, you know if they're gonna qualify for return a premium or a level plan, right? So you don't have to present the level plan like you did in the beginning, but then have to backpedal when you realize they've got HIV or they've got congestive heart failure or some declinable condition that only guaranteed issues. I, I think it just, there's no reason to show something to somebody that may not qualify for it or won't qualify for it. Just piss them off. It's kind of like the worst case scenario. So does all this make sense? So yeah, so you're saying, uh, let's see, I just, I was making notes while you're outside them while you're, yeah, and I'm going to have this recording put up so you can go back and, and definitely review this. Okay, so you're saying qualify, let's go through prescription, D or checking, and then budget, right? Yeah, so better yet, so the questions are need and want questions. You know, what were your thoughts, concerns? Why do you need life insurance? How much do you have currently? Yeah. Um, okay. Why is it important to buy insurance? Those are the need, want questions. The health questions, then the bank account, or the draft. Yeah, you, you, say, you say health questions. You're talking about the two, two-page thing on FEAM. 
Yes, yes, yes. There's a pre the pre qualification. Yes, yes. That's the one to follow. Okay. And then the All budget right. question. And on that page should be the script for both getting the bank account and the budget. And now, Dave, the the asking the health questions there, the two page on on there. That is that the same or not the same as punching in the script on Best Plan Pro? I mean, we use Best Plan Pro to, to determine which product they're going to be insured for. Um, at this, I mean, you can do that at this point. The important point is just to get this all on paper so that we kind of have a running record of what the situation is. Does that make sense? Does that answer? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. So we're right at the end of the call here, Donald, what we can do next time. I, I know you may be wrapped up Friday because it's a little later, but you can come back next time. We can drill the remainder of this. I would recommend that you go review my script and then watch okay. the, the classroom training specifically. Watch really steps two, three, and four. Two will kind of reinforce what we're talking about, uh, which is pre-qualification. Three is what we say in the presentation to build value and, and show us why we're the best choice. And then four, of course, is the closing. So I would review that. And then I'd love to get back on with you and drill that part so that we can iron out the rest of the presentation. Um, and we can do that whenever you show up again, Friday or next Tuesday. Okay. That sounds great. Hey, Don, I'm going to put you on mute, but thank you so much for having, uh, being on here. I really appreciate that. Let me uh, pull up Scott here. I see your hands up. Scott, what's going on? Well, I think the one you said, where did you get that information about Social Security? And it came off of your site. That's on the annuity part, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah, perhaps. I believe, but I believe that's there. But it's the something second, else. It's not exactly that. It might be right. It might be mentioned in there. But what what um, Donald was talking about was the two year wait. I mean, I'm sorry, the yes. 255 payout that Social Security yeah. does. For, so it's kind of a way to talk about why you should get insurance because the government doesn't pay crap. So I right. think that's probably what he meant. Okay. And the second question I've gotten for you, do you have one insurance company that has the stringent underwriting rules with the questions? Is that good enough to use to find out what their health is? Or do you have a specific uh, script that pertains yes. to all insurance companies to find out what happens? Go to the sales training website yeah. and go under sales final expense sales and look for the script section. You should see the pre-qualification worksheet. Just follow everything on that worksheet. It should cover pretty much everything. And it, it's not an application, but it will have all of the facts. So some companies don't have all of the health questions. This allows okay. you to gather the facts and then compare it to the actual app to figure out what it really is. Second question on that, if you go through and you ask according to your script, all those health questions, and then you get to the application where, for example, they've got a phone interview coming up where you have to go through those questions a second time. Um, how do they, how do they accept that? I mean, they're fine. Phone interview. Okay. I, I always tell them, look, I'm trying to be extremely thorough. I want to do the best job for you, Mrs. Prospect. So I just want to ask the word for word, the questions on here, just to make sure everything's fine. So we don't come back and pick the wrong company. Does that make sense? So if you pitch it that way, they're a lot more likely to, yeah, it's going to take more time, but they appreciate your thoroughness. Okay. That's all I had. Very good. Any last questions, anybody? Uh, feel free to chat or unmute yourself uh, before I wrap this thing up. So, so, so jump on, and if you want to ask, you can interrupt me. Uh, Takeaway for the day here, guys, is just is the pre-qualifications, the absolute most important aspect of your sales presentation, the master. Um, it tells us whether or not our time will be well spent with a high odds opportunity or a low odds opportunity. And if it's low, then we know based on an objective facts that we've gathered, we can end the sales presentation and move on to hopefully a real prospect. Remember, you're fighting against the clock every single day that you're in the field. And your job is to get in front of people who want to buy this stuff, not might buy it or aren't interested. And then minimize the opportunity or minimize the time with those people and maximize the time with the people who are open minded and receptive to what we do, we're doing. And nothing other than the pre qualification section and final expense, at least, allows for us to actually accomplish that. So I highly recommend, highly, highly recommend that you master pre qualification above all else. More important than closing, um, more important than the sales presentation to a certain extent. 
And uh, yeah, it just makes a huge difference. And, and the cool thing about it is that by itself, it builds rapport, it builds trust. Because when you ask good, solid, open-ended questions, you are perceived as somebody who cares, which builds rapport, and you display your expertise, which uh, builds your trust, builds the client trust you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. I'm gonna put this recording up. It should be up probably in the next hour or so, maybe a couple hours, depends on what's going on. But uh, other than that, hope you enjoyed and thank you for joining. Tomorrow we'll be back on for our carriers review training. So at 9.30 a.m. Eastern time, see you then.